I have a great life. I'm so grateful, so yeah. grateful. It is incredible. I, I couldn't have dreamt of having such a life. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Carol, yep. who is from Canada. You're Canadian. And where are you from in Canada? I'm from Quebec City, province of Quebec. And we can hear the French accent, <laughs> yes. but your English is really, really good. Thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. So you did you grow up in uh, there speaking both English and French? Well, uh, Quebec province of Quebec is the French speaking province mm -hmm. out of the 10 province of Canada. But I was born in Montreal and Montreal is more bilingual uh, than all the uh, rest of uh, the province. So I learned English very young. My parents were both uh, English speaking and they used to speak English for us kids not to understand what they were talking about when they were talking about us. So we wanted to hear and say, you know, learn what they, they were saying about us. So well, we just kind of learned. <laughs> That's good. It's paid off. You, yeah, yeah. Fluent in two languages is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, you are in a really nice uh, uh, B, class B. Yeah. Uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about your van. Well, in fact, it's a gift of God. <laughs> um, kind of everything is. <laughs> yes, even sometimes we don't think it is. It certainly is. Yeah. Like when I wanted to retire, I knew I wouldn't have the, the money to pay a rent and a car. So I was looking for alternative way of uh, living. And I ended up uh, being on your site and then discovered all this, you know, van life. And I said, oh, gee, that sounds interesting. And I started to looking f to look for a rig, but the bigger rigs like uh, class A, class uh, class C, the mileage was really hard. I couldn't afford that with my budget. So class B wasn't the, the last option, but they're more expensive than the other rigs. They are. And I kept on looking and looking. So I started to look in 2017 and at one point, I was calling this um, company that, well, all the companies that make those vans and ask if they, were, they would have any used one. And most of the time they didn't because people keep them or yes. they, they sell them on the uh, internet and they have higher price for them. And so anyway, I ended up calling this company that made this one. And just the day before, they had received three used ones that they picked back from uh, rental companies. They sell them to the companies and sometimes they pick them back if after two years or three years if they have good mileage and good conditions. They redo them all. They refurbish uh, them. And they had received three. There was one left. So I said, oh, ho, I'm going. I went and saw it and that was exactly the only model that I was having my wildest dream would have been to have one model like this because of the cargo space. And that's the one they had left. So that was mine. And the price was about half a, a, a new one. So it was okay for my budget. It was okay for my life that I wanted to be able to retire and have all my toys with me because I have this life calling of uh, being a music therapist, massage therapist and psychotherapist. And I also do workshops for people to make their uh, own Native American flute. I'm totally dedicated to the Native American flute. So I ended up with that van that is totally perfect, a total gift. And this company is su such an incredible company. I have never seen in my life a company with such a good customer services. Never, never in whatever field. Never, never, never. And who, who made your van then? That's Safari Condo. They are, um, they buy the, like, this is a Dutch van. And they buy them and they just transform them into camper van. Uh huh. It's a c c company from Quebec, province of Quebec. And uh, so you are full time now? You live in it all the time? Yeah, I had it end of April last year and started on the 7th of May to live in it full time. Although I was still working at my office job 40 hour plus, I would live and, and, and uh, park in my apartment basement and um, I would go to the apartment, sell everything, come back and, you know, live in the, in the van. And at the end of June, I left the apartment, retired, and I was full-time nomad since then. Good. 
So that's what you're doing from now on. Yes, sir. And I'm the happiest retired person in the world. I could have been in a basement apartment with um, uh, roommates that I wouldn't have known and, and, and be very uh, on a big depression because not being able to do what I love to do. And now this fits my budget, answers all my needs, and all the rest is for me my way of answering my life's calling and be of service and, and, and do all what I love to do. You traveling in the, uh, the United States in the, in the winter time. Yeah, that's my first time. That, well, I had been to the United States before, but not as, you know, for six months just for traveling or, or um, visiting. But now I left across the border on November 1st and will be back uh, end of April. So you can be in the U.S. for six months. Yeah, that's right. what we're allowed to. And then... Uh, snowbirds. So, snowbirds, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> now you are officially a snowbird. Uh, officially a snowbird. At the beginning, I, did, I didn't even want to, to go out of the, the, my city. I, I thought I would just stay there for the winter. I know someone who did stay in her camper van for two winters in Canada. And um, people manage. But the problem is for boondocking when you're a nomad, and it's also for the snow plowers. You know, when they, they clear the streets, you have to move, and then you have to find a place to park. But in the winter, they don't clear as much as in the summer. They clear the basic. So you have much less space to be able to park. So that's the part that is more difficult. And sometimes I'm trying to imagine myself if I would not be living like that. And I would have been so disappointed of being retired and being caught in a, you know, in a dynamic or, or way of living that wouldn't be to my expectations of being able to be of service and see people and travel and I've got it all. Yeah, now all. you can have it all. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned being of service and uh, you're a massage therapist for yeah. one thing. Yeah. And you're here doing massages. Yes, I've been doing that in the context of the caravan and RTR. And what is most grateful to me is the, seeing the results that people have and the change it makes in their life. I mean, this is the biggest reward. I don't ask for anything. Some people give donation. It's okay for me. It pays stuff like, you know, the tent or, or little things that I need more. My budget wouldn't allow me for that. So it gives me a little something. I just save the money. When I have it, I buy it, and that's it. So, and what, as I say, my most important thing is to see how people are happy with the results. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. And when I was with the caravan, I also used the tent. I had just received it to make um, a little a circle of people inside, and I took out my special instruments and I had a session of music therapy and the, the, the people coming after and telling you, you know, what it did, how it helped them. It is incredible. It is, it is a gift. This is what I wanted to do. And my dream now would be to, to travel the U.S. and Canada and people inviting me in their little town, you know, gathering maybe five or ten people and for me to be there for a week and be able to set up my tent to have a little place where I can give those massages or music therapy or whatever and having those uh, sessions so they build their Native American flute. Because it's nice to hear the flute, people like it, but when you, you make your own and you, you, you have it and you play it, it really is very, very soothing and very um, therapeutic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I've had a lot of testimony about this. and. Uh, yeah, and I thank you because you were an instrumental. You were really the turning point with all the information you provide to make it um, for people to know that it is possible and it is possible for all type of people. I've seen people with bigger rigs, a lot of money, but they still want to make this nomad life because they're fed up of their regular life. And they, it is accessible to, to all levels of people. It is. And I've seen people living in their car and having a little table outside. When we were at the uh, RTR and we had two, two days of rain, I had this neighbor in his car and a little table 
and I could see the rain pouring. I said, that guy, how is he going to have his breakfast? So I went to him and I said, well, come inside and have your meal inside. You know, I cannot offer the meal. I would like to, I cannot, but bring your stuff and come in and we'll heat it and you'll have a coffee and you'll have your, your meal inside. So there's all type, you know, and it's true that in the desert, there's not many days of rain, but if you have two days, that, that is six meals that you have to manage to, to cook something or, or eat out of a can, cold food, you know. It's also nice to be out of the car <laughs> for two days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so well, just, you could always put a raincoat, yes. I know, but I mean, it's not the same thing. Yeah. I feel I'm so lucky and so privileged and, and so comfortable. This is, this is. Luxury. Luxury, yes. yeah. And it's total luxury. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. That's okay. If you can afford it, you should have it. Well, it does fit in my budget. Yes. And uh, and I'm left with a little bit for food, a little bit for gas, and that's all I need. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit for insurances. Yes. But then all the rest, I've I've learned to make a difference very early in my life between needs and desires. Yes. Needs are important. You need your needs to be covered. All the rest is desire. And desire can wait, can be or not be, doesn't matter. So all the rest is a gift, and a gift you don't ask, you just let it come, and if it comes, good. If it doesn't, it's okay. Your needs, your basic needs are covered, but I have more than my basic need. I mean, yes. I'm traveling. I'm being in nature, and this is me. I need to be in nature. Even if I'm inside, I don't feel I'm in the house. When I was in my apartment, I would look outside, but you know, so I'm cooking, I'm looking outside, but it's 20 feet. I don't feel I'm outside. Here, when I cook, I am outside, even if I am protected from the environment, right. if it's cold or windy or whatever, I am outside, I am in nature. And if it's nice, you keep the door open. And, and even my cat, who is 13 years old now, he had never been outside uh, or on the ground. He had been in a second floor or third floor all his life. So he had never touched ground. And when we started van life, I mean, it took him about two weeks to dare going out and touch the ground and coming back in right away. He didn't know what that was, you know. And then he learned that, you know, grass was nice to chew on and it was nice to go and explore. and. I lost him once for 24 hours and I cried. I thought I had lost him forever because for half a second I didn't see him and he escaped probably running after a squirrel or something. And it was raining, pouring rain for 24 hours after that. So he must have been hiding, but I was sure he couldn't smell his way back. He, he had never been in nature. And somebody told me, you put his litter out. He's gonna smell that. And as a fact, 4.30 in the morning, I had left my window open a little bit because I wanted to be sure to, to hear him. I couldn't leave the door because it was pouring rain, but I heard a little meow, opened the door, he went in, and uh, <laughs> gee, I cried for half an hour. I was so happy to have found him back. And I said, well, now, from now on, if, when we're in an environment that is not as secure, the harness will be a must. But for time being, he has a good life. He yes. has a very good cat life. Do you have any social media or YouTube, Facebook that you want to tell people? Yes, Facebook is easy. Is my name Carol Carrier with Carol with E Carrier with two R's, and I have a um, email address which is the same Carol Carrier eight at gmail .com. And if people are interested in a massage and are in the area, yeah, they can get a massage. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's why I want to keep on with the caravans after uh, we're uh, uh, through with the interview because uh, I want to be able to offer that as long as I'm here to be able to offer any, you know, of those uh, specialties that I have. There are certain licensing requirements for massage. How are you getting around those? Well, in Canada, I have full license. I have many specialties. In the U.S., I don't have those um, uh, licenses, but since I'm doing it as a volunteer, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's a passion. It's a life calling. It's not, um, I don't do it for, for earning the money. Even when I was working full time, this was always kind of a sideline, but it, it, it is a passion. 
it really is a passion. So if I can help someone, whether playing the music or giving a massage, I mean, my purpose is to help. Mm -hmm. And talking about your music, do you have a, a CD or anything that you sell? Yes, I do have a CD, which I always forget to take out. But <laughs> <laughs> In 2003, I went walking this pilgrimage of uh, Saint-Jacques de Compostelle, which is in Europe. I started in France and walked for three months all the way down to Spain and then across Spain from east to west to this big cathedral called Saint-Jacques de Compostelle. So I walked for three months. I had this one flute, this unique flute I had at the time. And when I met, uh, when I was uh, playing my flute, I was walking alone, but sometimes you meet people and I would wait, um, um, stop in the, in the um, churches for taking a break of the heat. It was a, a heat wave in that summer. And I would play my flute and people would come to me with so much emotion and telling me all they had felt while hearing the music. And they asked me if I would make a CD. So when I came back to Canada, I went to a professional studio and registered a CD, but it's all improvisation. improvisation. I don't have any musical knowledge. And this is the beauty of the special instrument that I play. They don't, know, they don't need you to know music. You just play with your heart. You play with your intuition. And Native American is, flute is, is totally, totally um, therapeutic in that sense. Either you hear it or you play it. It's just kind of flowing your heart through it. Do you sell them? Yes, I do. Okay, good. <laughs> yes. I still, I, I do have some with me. I always bring, I always have, have some with me. I usually give them up, but I do sell them, yes. Do you have some place where people can go and buy them? Yeah, if they write a, an email to me. To or, you? Yeah, they can, uh, I can send it by mail and, uh, okay. yeah. Okay. Great. I Great. would love to do that. Over the years, I've had uh, the crystal harp. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Crystal harp, they're like tubes. It looks like a lyre, lyre you say? It's, you know, those... Like a U-curve? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And they're crystal tubes that you hit, and it, the, 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 the tubes is made of 99.9% pure crystal quartz. And the sound is totally heaven, totally heaven. It's, it's incredible. And I also have this other very small harp, which is called a ravery harp, that people always fall in love with. It just has the same sound as a big Celtic harp, but it's very tiny and it plays beautifully also. It's all, all my music is kind of relaxing, therapeutic music. Maybe you have heard of those um, hang drums. They're kind of metal drums, they're big metal drums. And you just punch them with your hands very gently. And they also have a very special kind, although it's metal, it's a special uh, uh, mix of metal that has a very special um, sound. So I have those you know, instrument that, with which I would like to make another CD so people can enjoy those instruments also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah. Tell folks where they can buy your video, your CD. Okay. Just give them your email again. And, yeah, uh, the email is carol, with an E, C-A-R-O-L-E, C-A-R-R-I-E-R, -E -E 8, the number 8, at gmail.com. And how much are the CDs? $20. $20? Yeah. Okay, very good. So if you've enjoyed this music, folks, go ahead and uh, write in to her, and she'll drop you one in the mail. Yeah. Very good. So folks, there you have it. If you've gotten... I know you've enjoyed this video and some amazing words of wisdom. Someone who loves their life. That's you. How can you not be enthused and inspired by that? So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.